Hello friends, Mandar here, back with another video. Today I am going to talk about L1 visa for the United States. This video is part of the series that I am creating for different kinds of work visas that are available in the United States. So in this video I am going to cover L1 visa and all the details related to this visa such as what is L1 visa, who is this visa for, what is the validity of this visa, who can sponsor this visa and what is the process, what are the limitations of this visa and what are the challenges that L1 visa holders face. Stay with me until the end and I will give you a tip for the visa holders of L1 that are on the brink of losing their job and what are the options available for them. So stay with me, all of this is coming right up. So L1 visa is a temporary non-immigrant work visa available in the United States. There are two types of L1 visa. One is L1A, which is intra-company transferee for executive or manager. And then the second one is L1B, which is intra-company transferee for specialized knowledge. Now let's start with L1A. L1A non-immigrant visa enables US employer to transfer an executive or a manager from one of its foreign affiliates into US. It could be either to start a new office in the United States or it could be work in the existing office in the United States that has an affiliation with the foreign office. The employer has to file form I-129 for the employee who they want to transfer to the United States. There are certain criteria that the employer has to meet. The employer should have a qualifying relationship with this foreign entity. Now what are the qualifications for the employee who is going to get this L1 visa? So the employee should be working with this employer in the foreign office at least one year in the last three years prior to coming to the United States. The employee should be seeking to work in an executive role while in the United States for this employer. What is executive role? They should be making strategic and significant decisions on behalf of the company while in the United States. Or the employee should be in the managerial capacity. What it means is the employee should be managing a large team or a department or carrying out significant function on behalf of the company. What is the validity of L1 visa? All L1A employees request for extension of stay may be granted in increments of up to two additional years to the maximum limit of seven years. L2 visa, the visa which is given to the spouse, can apply for an EAD, which is Employment Authorization Document and can work in the United States. What is the process to apply? First method is individual application for the employee, which means filling out a form called I-129 and going through the embassy to get L1A visa stamped on your passport. That is one option. The second one is company can file a blanket petition for L1. This has certain requirements such as the company should be engaged in a trade relationship with the entity in the US. US business should be more than one year old. There should be at least three or more offices in the US as well as foreign. There should be at least 10 L1A approvals obtained by the company within a year. There should be $25 million of annual sales within the United States and there should be at least 1000 US employees. If the blanket petition is approved, the employer can just give the approval notice to the employee who can take it to the US embassy with along with different documents and get the visa stamped. Canadian citizens who are exempt from the L1 visa requirement don't need to go through the consular processing. They can just show up with all the documents to the port of entry or to the pre-clearance facility at the airport to obtain the L1A visa. Now the second type of L1 visa is L1B which is for intra-company transferee specialized knowledge. So what is specialized knowledge? Specialized knowledge is something in product, service, research, equipment, technique, management or other interest as it applies to company. What is the period of stay for L1B employee? So qualified employees who wish to come to United States to establish a new office will get an initial stay of one year. All other L1B employees will get an initial stay of two to three years and then they can extend the visa up to five years. So let's look at some of the advantages of L1A visa over H1B. In case of L1, there is no job offer required because it is expected that the employee is already working for that employer at its foreign office. Another advantage is there is no annual limit on L1A. The third advantage is L1A has a maximum limit of seven years as against 
six years for H1B. Although L1B has a maximum limit of only five years. There is no particular degree requirement for L1 visa. Spouses can work. It is a dual intent visa, which means L1 employees can apply for a green card. And there is no LCA required as it is required in H1B application. So those are the benefits. Now let's look at some of the disadvantage of L1 visa. As I said, L1A employee must already be employed with the company for at least a year in the last three years before coming to the United States. So that could be a disadvantage. So not everybody would be eligible to apply for this visa. There is no extension possibility beyond the seven years or five years, depending on if it's L1A or L1B. Whereas in case of H1B, if you have a green card application in process, you have a pathway for unlimited extensions until you get a green card. No such facility is available for L1. L1 employees cannot run a business on the side. They can only work for L1 sponsored employer. Another disadvantage is not all companies can file L1A for their employees because there has to be certain criteria met as I talked earlier that makes a company eligible to apply for L1 visa. There is no L1 transfer process between the companies like there is for H1B. And due to this, L1A employees cannot change companies from one L1 to another L1. If they were to change the companies, they will have to do L1 to H1 transfer. In fact, it will be an entirely new H1B petition. So some of the real consequences of L1, some are similar to H1B, such as in case an L1 employee loses its job, they have to return to their home country where they came from. The other option is they can change their status to one of the non immigrant So as I said before, there is a bonus tip I wanted to give you. So I promise to tell you about some options that L1B people have if they come across a situation of job loss or to avoid being out of status. So what are the options? One is change of status petition from L1 to one of the non-immigrant visas such as B1, B2, H4, F1 or any other non-immigrant status. That is one option. The second option is apply for a Canadian PR. And I have a lot of videos I have made for Canadian PR application. There are several different categories. And then there is another option called Compelling Circumstance EAD. This is a very special EAD that is given in, a, in extraordinary circumstances where it is impossible for an employee to leave the United States, in which situation the employee can seek legal advice and get this EAD. So that's all I had for today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.